Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. We're a little late. We've, <clears throat> we've been preparing. Uh, yeah. Oh, Andy. This, Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. And we're the Smiths, and I hope you can hear us. We're just, you know, really, you. really nervous trying to, um, to worry about prevention from bad things, right? Like, anyway. <laughs> so we're hoping that everybody Woo. is well and healthy mm -hmm. um, because there's been a lot of talk of stuff going around and so we're trying to be extra careful tonight we don't want you to get anything from us or we don't want to get anything from you but uh, sometimes that just seems a little <laughs> a little too silly <laughs> because Is everybody tired of hearing the coronavirus? Yeah, let's. Maybe I could just. It, hang it's it causing with my a whole head. bunch of stuff, right? <laughs> not just. It's not, hot. not just people getting sick. It's causing. It's causing a lot more. Craziness. Other stuff. <laughs> a lot Life's more crazy. craziness than crazy, illness, crazy, right? right? And it's yeah. Just, yep. So. Does, does all that talk about the coronavirus? Does it like get you a little anxious or nervous or even fearful? Uh, it has some people in fear, and they're doing things that they wouldn't normally be doing because they're acting out of fear. And it's just, it gets crazy. And the truth is, sometimes when we let fear get in the way, overtake us, we dwell on that. Sometimes the fear actually brings into our lives or causes us to bring in the very thing that we're being afraid of. Like, for example, this fear of getting the coronavirus. <laughs> If there are people, they get a little cough, they get a little fever, and oh no, because of all the talk about the coronavirus, now they've got a symptom of something and they think this must be it. And so they go right to the source of the germ, the hospital or the emergency room where everybody's sharing it, and then they increase their chances of getting it when they didn't need to do that. Um, I actually read an article where that kind of thing is happening. So I remember as a child being told, you know, when you get around dogs, if, he's, if a dog sounds ferocious and is growling, don't be afraid. Don't show your fear because then they will attack. They can smell your fear. And I don't know if they can really smell fear, but I think they can pick up on that energy that, that fear has. And if, they, if you're being fearful and the dog feels that fear, then they will attack out of fear to protect themselves. And so I think that's maybe how it happens. And so fear can actually bring about the thing that you're being afraid of instead of protecting you from it. So, what does the coronavirus and being afraid have to do with a good marriage? Well, it's like this. People have symptoms of things that aren't quite right in their marriage. And because divorce is talked about so much, just like the coronavirus. You hear all this talk about the coronavirus, and if you get a sore throat, if you get a fever, if you get a cough, all of a sudden you're afraid that you've got it. You've got the virus. Well, because of all the talk about failing marriages and struggling relationships and divorce, when you have something show up like an argument, or you didn't agree on everything, you don't know how to plan well and have a vacation together, whatever it might be, something like that shows up and you go, oh no, we've got it. We've got the failing marriage. We've got the D word. We've got the divorce disease. And it's just not true. So you don't have to see the cough or the fever as evidence of the coronavirus. What was that you just heard? 80% of the people that experience the coronavirus, this is from the Center for Disease Control. 80% of the people that experience it, they actually get it, it's mild symptoms, okay? So obviously if you have a, an immune system problem, then you still need to be super cautious, but we're freaking out over things that don't need to freak out over. Oh. And so the percentages of people that actually are getting the virus are small. Most people with flu-like symptoms is not the coronavirus. It's something else. So just like, like our son's <laughs> son's girlfriend today went to watching. the hospital. She went to the hospital. Yeah. 
Are we going to talk about that? I, too? I think we saw you, Susie. Yeah. Are, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you get better soon from the flu. <laughs> so the point we're trying to make is don't be fearful just because you hear a lot of talk about struggling marriages. A little conflict, a little back and forth stuff, a marriage isn't supposed to be 100%, you know, the bed of roses all the time. Growing comes from struggles. And so just because there's a struggle, that is not an indication that you're in disease in your marriage. You're not headed for divorce. If you just like throw that out as an option, you won't ever catch it. Uh, we can't say that's true for the coronavirus, that you'll never catch it if you don't think about it. But in the case of the divorce disease, that's absolutely true. If you throw that out as an option, you don't need to catch it. <laughs> so, but we've got some prevention yes. ideas. Yes, we want to share prevention is good. Some, some, some vitamins for you. Kind of boost your immune system with these ABCs. Okay, so the first one. Boost your marriage immunity. Boost your marriage immunity. Um, the no. first one. Disease immunity. No, we. <laughs> No, so get immune, no, be yeah. immune to marriage, right? <laughs> That'll fix it. Immunity to separating or divorce. There we go. So, the first one is some vitamin A, which stands for being active. Active in prevention, okay? So, sometimes we need emergency first aid. Like, we're, we know our relationship is to the point that we need the emergency first aid. So, we strongly recommend seeking... a. a a reliable counselor or a coach um, and commit to that really commit to getting the help now we love coaching and we have a lot of different tools um, that help like emotionally and energetically and that is just a really great way when you need that emergency first aid um, and once again it's committing to that and then the other oh, this is this is really good because so many people, when their marriage is hurting or it's sick, they just bury it, throw mm. it out, and bury it. You don't, <laughs> who does that? You, you got a cough or a sneeze. Oh, did you hear that? He coughed. Bury him. Let's <laughs> get rid of him. Yeah. Go get emergency first no. aid. Yeah, we, okay. we take care of it. We get it better. And if you believe an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, if you're lucky enough to find some hand sanitizer at the store. I uh, actually ordered this online. Um, you can do the prevention, right? To, to avoid the, the disease of divorce or separation. So self-help books are great, going to marriage retreats. Um, we also have this really amazing online marriage academy. And so you'll see there's a link um, in this post to go to the sneak peek page which is really cool. So it shows you all the things in the Marriage Academy, some amazing principles and um, great tools and fun things to do to support your marriage, strengthen your marriage greatly. So check that out in this link. Um, and then I'm going to go to vitamin B. Vitamin B is no barriers. Um, so no barriers between you, unless you don't want more children right now. <laughs> Or if you're having an emotionally charged fight, oh, I think I just dropped something, whatever. Anyway, if you're having an emotionally charged fight, you do want to separate and get a barrier between you until you cool just, down. Yeah, temporarily. Right? And then when you cool down, what we would encourage for this no barriers is that open, honest communication. Be vulnerable enough. Be willing to share everything. Now, if you're fortunate enough, to find some stolen toilet paper from the restaurant bathroom. <laughs> you could even use this as a tool for your open, honest communication. So the person that is the bearer of the stolen toilet paper is the one that would get to speak when you want to talk about a tough topic. And the yeah, other like person listen only. only listens and then takes deep breaths because they want to interrupt you when you're talking. <laughs> and then when you're finished, you can pass the stolen toilet paper and it's their turn to talk and to clarify so that they understand what you just said and then to maybe share their side Obviously, story. <laughs> there's great power in toilet <laughs> so paper. There's a lot of power. It's mine, my turn to talk. <laughs> so um, anyway, open, honest communication. No barriers between you. That's huge, huge for avoiding uh, the disease of divorce, right? Okay, 
So now we're to vitamin C. Vitamin C is very important. So for vitamin C, we have this for cozy, Comforter. cozy and comfortable and cuddle. So get cozy and cuddle and share everything with your spouse. Except the coronavirus. So. Oh wait, hold oh, on. What? I take vitamin D. Oh, vitamin D. You oh, take vitamin talk about D. That. Okay. So vitamin D for your marriage. Uh, D is for dating and discovery. So um, spend time together, go on dates, uh, and discover something new that you like to do together. Um, lots of room for growing uh, and nurturing your relationship through dating and discovery. So there you go. Okay, um, so take your A, vitamins. vitamins, A, B, C, D, and all the others, and check out the Marriage Academy. That's super awesome for um, boosting the immune system of your marriage, making it stronger and protecting it against the dreaded D. So everybody stay healthy. <laughs> See you next time. Bye guys.